pager. Come on, honey. Lease a Motorola Bravo pager for less than $20 a month and relax. You're only a phone call away. Okay now, ointments and powders. Honey. This is your 24-hour news station, WHAS-TV, Louisville. Now, from WHAS-TV, this is Action 11 News at 6. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gary Rodemeyer. Melissa Swan is off tonight. A judge has sentenced a Jefferson County man to 10 years in prison for the death of his brother and a best friend in a drunk driving accident. Action 11's John McGrath reports the judge says he couldn't ignore another drunk, charging, uh, drunk driving charge against Douglas Fields after the fatal accident. 26-year-old Douglas Fields pleaded guilty to two counts of second-degree manslaughter in the drunk driving accident last August that killed his brother, 30-year-old Edward Fields, and his best friend, 23-year-old Brian Lynn. Today, Fields' parents pleaded for mercy for their only remaining son, tearfully asking Judge John Potter to grant Douglas Fields probation. I think Doug will be punished for the rest of his life. I think I'll put myself in Doug's place that if I had had an accident and my sister, my best friend was killed, it would be very hard for me to live with that the rest of my life. That, to me, is punishment. But prosecutor Joe Gutman told Judge Potter Douglas Fields apparently needs to be taken off the street. Gutman read from the arrest report filed when Fields was again arrested for drunk driving in early February. Subject was crying and kept talking to his brother, who he stated he killed while driving, while intoxicated in an accident. Subject was unable to perform field sobriety test. Fields stood silent, fighting back tears throughout the hearing as relatives pleaded for his freedom and as police and the prosecutor called for the judge to put him behind bars. Judge Potter, citing the February drunk driving arrest, told Fields he could not ignore the fact that the young man had once again climbed behind the wheel of a car after drinking. Potter sentenced Fields to prison. Mr. Fields is sentenced to 10 years on each of two counts of manslaughter in the second degree. The motion for probation is denied. It's denied on the grounds that to do so when I duly depreciate the seriousness of the offense. Mr. Fields, would you please go with my sheriff? Fields, obviously stunned by the sentence, shuffled out of the courtroom to be taken to prison as his family sobbed and held each other, watching the only surviving son let off to serve his sentence. Fields will be eligible for parole after serving two years of the sentence. John McGrath, Action 11 News. Two Louisville men charged with the robbery of a police detective were found guilty today of lesser charges. Jerry Boyd and Isaac Johnson paid fines after a jury found them guilty of misdemeanor charges. Detective Travis Hatchell told a jury that Boyd and Johnson tried to rob him of knife point. But the defense said the pair was only asking Hatchell for a ride, and they suggested that the police beat Boyd and charged him with robbery to cover the beating. The jury found both Boyd and Johnson not guilty of robbery, but both were convicted of resisting arrest. Boyd was also found guilty of a menacing charge, the jury apparently believing that he approached Hatchell with a knife. Boyd was fined $200 on those charges. Johnson was fined $100. Indiana police tonight are still investigating an accident that killed a Lawrence family last night near Seymour. 32-year-old Robert Massengill, his wife Carla, and their two sons were killed in a fiery three-vehicle crash on Interstate 65. Police say the Massengill's car crossed the Interstate 65 median and struck a southbound semi-trailer, which was then hit by another truck. A four-mile section of the interstate was closed for several hours after the accident. Two buildings were destroyed and a third severely damaged as a fire raged through the business district of West Liberty, Kentucky, early this morning. Two of the eastern Kentucky City's most popular shopping areas were destroyed, and as Mark Hebert reports, damage could hit a million dollars. This afternoon, smoke was still blowing out of the second floor windows and off of the collapsed roof of Peyton's Pharmacy, located in the heart of West Liberty, an eastern Kentucky city of 3,200 people. Fire destroyed seven businesses and offices here overnight, including a hardware store, Payton's, a dentist office, and the Morgan County Commonwealth Attorney's Office. Smoke damage hit three other businesses, including the local movie house. 
hardware store owner Shorty Terry says he was devastated when he first saw flames sweeping through his store late last night. Have you got insurance? Uh, some insurance, not enough to cover the damage at this point, you know. I mean, uh, I've never had anything like this to happen to me before, and I just, I just feel like a lost in this going on. It took firefighters eight hours to extinguish this blaze, which spared nothing in its path. An investigator from the state fire marshal's office looked over the two gutted buildings today, but local fire officials don't suspect arson. They think an electrical shortage triggered the flames. Local residents also surveyed the damage, which was a blow to their community. It's, it's really a tragedy. For so many businesses here, we really need uh, the businesses being open with the jobs and all that. And it's a shame that we have to have this to happen. Longtime Morgan Countyans say this is the third time since 1930 that fire has decimated the same city block. The last time it happened was in 1970. Yeah, that's the very same place it is here. But, uh, what burned down that time? Uh, wood. Uh, and most of the wood burned out in 1970. Insurance adjusters must get a good look at the thousands of dollars in damage before cleanup efforts can begin. In West Liberty, Mark Hebert, Action 11 News. Shorty Terry says he will rebuild his hardware store, but it won't be at the same downtown location. Terry believes the burned out block may be jinxed by fire. Some Bullitt County residents may be steaming over new water rates that were approved today by the Public Service Commission. The PSC has approved a request by the Salt River Water District to raise its rates by $173,000 a year. So, if you are a Salt River customer, your average bill will go up from $19.50 a month to a little more than $31 a month. A relic of frontier America, riverboat gambling, is back on the Mississippi, and one state watching that experiment, based in Iowa, is nearby Indiana. Three opulent vessels with huge paddle wheels rolled onto the river near Bettendorf, Iowa. This was the first cruise under a new Iowa law that allows gambling parlors on the father of waters. State officials hope to raise $10 million a year in additional tax revenue from the gambling cruises. Eight other states are considering similar proposals. The fate of riverboat gambling in Indiana is uncertain, but the House has approved the bill that allows casino gambling in Gary, French Lick, and West Baden. But Governor Evan Bayh says he opposes gambling in the Hoosier State. Well, coming up next, one credit card company is offering a guaranteed low price, and some New Albany teachers and parents take to the Capitol steps looking for some help for education. Action 11 News is sponsored by First National Bank. Coming through for you. Right now, when you take out a loan at First National, you not only get a quick and easy loan at a competitive rate, you also get a little surprise. Bonds. Free bonds. That's right. Up to $200 in free bonds. So if you need a loan for a car, boat, or whatever, see First National for details on the loan that pays you something back. And you have our bond on that. First National Bank. 1920, America was taking to the road, and a booming Kentucky automobile industry was producing more than two dozen makes of cars, like this Minuteman 6. With 24 horsepower, it would clip along at 45 miles per hour, proudly saying, look what we're doing in Kentucky now. Pride of accomplishment. It has powered the people of this region and one of her banks for over 136 years. There are banks, and there is liberty. Which is better for shrimp values, Captain D's or the other guys? Well, the other guys offer you very little shrimp for your money, but at Captain D's, for $3.99, you can enjoy a dinner with three types of shrimp. Lightly battered shrimp, hand-breaded shrimp, and bite-sized shrimp. Plus fries, slaw, and hush puppies for only $3.99. The new shrimp trio dinner, a shrimp value the other guys can't touch. At Captain D's, the great little seafood place. Premier Magazine called her the most powerful woman in Hollywood. On the next Entertainment Tonight, we're taking a close-up look at Julia Roberts. Find out why industry insiders say she's the hottest female box office draw in 10 years. I think it's what everybody's sort of working for. And critics say a new dramatic and demanding role will ensure her superstar status. I mean, our intention is to be quite positive. Julia Roberts, pretty and powerful, only on Entertainment Tonight. Tonight at 7, followed by Pick 3 on WHAS-TV. 
A group of New Albany parents and teachers are fed up with the current system of funding education, and they have launched a statewide effort for change. Today, they rallied on the steps of the state capitol, and Action 11's Paula Campbell has more on their fight for better schools. They call themselves Hope for an Equal Learning Policy, or HELP. Today, they bombarded the state capitol to push for equal funding for all Indiana schools. Beverly Libs of New Albany started the group. A mother of two, she says she became increasingly upset with the lack of education her children were getting. Here we've got a generation coming up that is missing out on so much when it's a high-tech world and they're going to be called upon more and more for more and more knowledge and more and more technical skills. And we've got to be able to provide them with that. But support for help has grown statewide, especially after legislators propose severe cuts in education. If approved, it will mean layoffs for 6,000 Indiana teachers and elimination of school programs. The state says local districts will need to raise property taxes to make up the difference, but Lib says that will only increase the burden on citizens who are already not getting what they paid for. Why should I stand by and, and let keep putting more money in for property taxes and not getting my equal dollar back? It just doesn't make sense. This is the only thing that makes sense. Instead, parents are calling for the state to use its untapped revenue, including its rainy day fund for education, until an equal funding policy is adapted. Help Vice President Dr. Kevin Sue Bailey says she thinks the grassroots effort will force lawmakers to do just that. I think the Senate will look at this, and I, I think that it will look bad on the legislators if they don't deal with this now and take the, the chicken route out and let the, the courts decide. We don't want that. We want to know why we put those people in the state house. Help says it will remain intact even after the equal funding issue is resolved. Organizers say they plan to act as a watchdog to make sure education of Indiana youngsters never gets the short end of the stick again. In Indianapolis, Paula Campbell, Action 11 News. In today's business, Citibank is offering a new deal to try and recharge its credit card business. Citibank cards will guarantee the lowest possible price on customer purchases. Here's how the plan works. If a Citibank credit customer buys a television at one store and then finds it cheaper someplace else, Citibank would give the customer a rebate for the difference. Analysts say this could be the first shot fired in a credit card war. Credit card companies have been adding benefits to their cars, trying to attract new customers. Already, some offer cash rebates, and others offer replacement of goods if they are lost, stolen, or damaged. On Wall Street today, the day after the holiday weekend produced a big downtrend on moderate volume. The Dow Industrial Average closed off 32 points with volume 140 million shares. Traders said they got signals that the economy is slightly improved, but is still quite weak. Well, next, Chuck Taylor comes up with a warming trend that should produce a beautiful spring day. <laughs> One day, you'll appreciate the advantages of our home equity loan. I'm out here asking people, where's the best place to go for grilled chicken sandwiches? We give up. Well, here's a hint. It's the only place that makes two delicious new grilled chicken sandwiches. We still don't know. Well, here's another hint. They make a new deluxe grilled chicken with lettuce, tomato, and honey mayo, and a new barbecue grilled chicken with onion, pickle, and tangy barbecue sauce. Ooh, sounds great. Who is it? Only Arby's makes a new deluxe grilled chicken and barbecue grilled chicken sandwich. Try one. So why are you keeping this place a secret? Mary, I don't know how we're going to get along without you. Oh, I'll think of you whenever we have an emergency. Mary, I'm going to miss you so much. Mary spends a lot of time thinking about others. May I help you? Hi, I'm Mary, your new volunteer. Mary, am I glad to see you. That's why at Humana, we've spent a lot of time thinking about Mary and people like her. If you're 65 or older and enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B, call now for your copy of the Medicare Solution Booklet at no cost. It provides current facts about Medicare and Medicare supplement insurance that can pay 100% of your Medicare Part A deductible in a Humana Hospital. You'll find out about the quality health care Humana Hospitals provide and the Humana Seniors Association, a nationwide organization that offers many services. Call now for your copy of the Medicare Solution Booklet. I have just the one for you. For a limited time, eligible Kentucky members of the Humana Gold Plan can receive eyeglasses at no cost. <laughs> this story just into Action 11 News. One of the founders of modern dance has died. Martha Graham died of cardiopulmonary arrest due to congestive heart failure at her New York City home. Miss Graham was viewed by many as the greatest contributor to the development of modern dance in the 20th century. She was 96 years old. More on the story on World News tonight at 6.30.
And now Chuck Taylor, after a beautiful Easter Sunday and a very nice Easter Monday, Chuck, it uh, looks like one more good day here. Oh, absolutely, Gary. Tomorrow is going to be a nice day, and it is going to be warmer. You know, the month of March averaged out warmer than normal by about 4.3 degrees, and precipitation was just about normal. Well, what about for the month of April? Well, the National Weather Service, in their outlook for the month of April, is saying it's going to be warmer than normal, above normal temperatures, and above normal precipitation. Well, I can guarantee that tomorrow we will see those above normal temperatures with a high of 68, and then it looks like above normal rainfall coming in here starting on Wednesday and probably continuing into Friday. But today, most of the country enjoyed pretty nice weather on this April Fool's Day. There was some cloudiness up in the northeast and a little bit of rain and snow there. There is a storm developing out west that is going to be moving eastward, and that's why we're talking about the chance of showers here along about Wednesday. But right now, the region is enjoying fine weather. And take a look at some of these temperatures. And they are very close to normal for the 1st of April. 62 right now around Fort Knox. To our north, fair weather, 57 at Bedford, 54 at Indianapolis. The warm spot, though, is Paducah. Their temperature right now is a very mild 73. Well, here in Louisville, we have bright, sunny skies. Our current rating is 60. Humidity is low, only 25%. Winds, though, are fairly brisk out of the west at 16 miles an hour. The barometer is holding steady at 30.23 inches. The normal high for the first day of April is 62, but we topped out at 63, and our early morning low was 47. Had no precipitation for the day or for the new month. Well, taking a look at national radar, again, just a little bit of precipitation in the northeast. Light rain through parts of Pennsylvania and New York State. We're on Buffalo, New York. Earlier, they had a little bit of light snow, but the rest of the country is on the dry side. A little cold front moved through here earlier today. Now, that did bring in a few light showers in the region last night. We can look to the north and see a big high-pressure system over the western Great Lakes. That will move to the southeast and provide us with clear, chilly weather tonight. And then, as the high moves off to the east of us tomorrow, we're going to see a little bit of a warming trend. There is a new low-pressure system developing over Nevada. That is going to be heading to the east. And that will bring clouds in here on Wednesday. And before the day is over, it looks like we will see a few showers. In the meantime, though, we're going to be enjoying some fine weather. Check out our forecast now for tonight. It's going to be fair and chilly. We'll see an overnight low down to 36. Tomorrow, some beautiful early April weather. It's going to be fair and warmer with lighter winds. Tomorrow afternoon, we should top out around 68. We will see just a few clouds around tomorrow night with the overnight low around 42. Showers will be developing on Wednesday with a high of 70. And then it looks like rain and maybe a few thunderstorms for Thursday on into Friday with a little bit uh, cooler weather. Gary, the good news is I think the showers will move out on Saturday. And with sunshine, we'll see temperatures into the probably low 70s. So that's good news. And in the meantime, one more nice day tomorrow. Spring is definitely here, Chuck. It is. Very nice. Well, next in sports, which Cinderella basketball team will get the magic sneaker tonight? A preview of the NCAA final is coming up. See the difference a leader makes with Kroger Bonus Buys. They're the smartest buys in town. Ground Chuck, $1.39 a pound. Cottonelle Bath Tissue, 79 cents. Blue Bonnet Margarine, 39 cents. And Golden Ripe Bananas, 28 cents a pound. The smartest buys in town. Kroger bonus buys. See the difference a leader makes. Go Krogering. Decorating? Need ideas? Call Indiana Blind and Drapery for all your home decorating needs. Blinds, drapes, carpet, upholstery, top treatments, and more. Featuring a full line of Levelor products, including Riviera, Monaco, and the newest San Tropez. Levelor, one name says it all. Call today for a free estimate from one of our professional designers. You'll get the best price and the best service in town. So don't put off decorating another minute. Call us, Indiana Blind and Drapery, 949-9696. Get on the fast track to winning free money with 84 WHAS. We recently mailed the Triple Crown Sweepstakes brochure to you. Inside, you'll find your win, place, and show tickets good for $100, $1,000, $5, $5,000 in free money, plus prizes from Churchill Downs and super-saving coupons. Listen to 84 WHAS for details and get set to join us in the winner's circle. The Triple Crown Sweepstakes from 84 WHAS. Lee's Fair.
famous recipe has the best tasting chicken in town. Delicious famous recipe style chicken. Honey dipped and pressure cooked to seal in the flavor. And spicier, crunchier, crispy plus. Now the best tasting chicken costs less. So come on, eat in or take home for convenience. For a limited time, Lee's 8-Piece Chicken Box is just $4.99. Who do you appreciate? <laughs> Dave is off tonight. Gary Fogle is in. Ordinarily in the NCAA championship, you have one team of destiny. But tonight, it seems like we have two teams. That well, are I, maybe doing Duke well. is the team of destiny because they, they've been so close so many times. You know, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. But so. Kansas has been playing so well. <laughs> Kansas has True. just done True. everything right in the tournament, so. and they seem to be on a roll. But then Duke beat UNLV, and yeah. they were supposed to be the greatest ever. Yeah, I think both teams are peaking. Maybe Duke just a tad more. For the fourth consecutive year, the Duke Blue Devils will try to come away with that school's first NCAA championship after making it to the Final Four. Tonight, they are a three-and-a-half point favorite over Kansas, and this game will reunite a few friends. Duke guard Bobby Hurley, as well as Christian Leitner, were teammates of Kansas center Mark Randall last summer during the World University Games. Throughout the season, we probably... Once every two weeks, we'd talk on the phone. He'd call, or I would call him. And, uh, you know, most of it was not talking about basketball. I got to know him as a person, but uh, more as a player, he, you know, he's very strong. He's 6'10 and very, very mobile for as big as he is. Um, you know, he likes to run the floor. He likes to pass. Speaking of Leitner, he adds into the title game tonight, needing just nine points to become only the 11th player in Duke history to score more than 1,700 points in a career. However, if he doesn't get there, it's always next year. That's because Leitner is only a junior. As a matter of fact, Duke will return its top four scorers next season. As basketball season winds down and baseball season is about to get underway, we also have college football to consider. The Louisville Cardinals took to the field today as they begin spring football drills. But a major task for this outfit is to replace 12 starters they lost from last year's Fiesta Bowl winning ball club. Our problem, obviously, are the fact that we've graduated 25 premier young men that have uh, accomplished so much at this university. And though we have great talent on this football team, uh, somehow we've got to make up for the lack of experience that 25 graduating players always leave you with. But by and large, it's a great uh, situation to be in. It has been a very short break for the players, but they are chomping at the bit to get going again. Spring practice is fun. Spring conditioning is not fun. <laughs> Once you get in shape to practice to play the game, then the game is fun. Uh -huh. It's getting in shape that's the hard part. Uh, so that's over with? Yes, that's over. Now we start to hit in the gladiator part. <laughs> you didn't have much of a break. You, uh, you kind of wish maybe it was a little bit longer? Man, we didn't have no break. <laughs> uh, yes, and yes, I do wish it was a little bit longer, but, you know, that's the price of success. You got to pay a price, so we're paying it right now. The Cardinals will practice each Monday through Thursday. They will scrimmage the next two Saturdays with their final major scrimmage set for Saturday, April 20th. That'll be played this year at Cardinal Stadium. They'll kick off at 2 that afternoon. The Kentucky Wildcats and Indiana Hoosiers are also on the practice field. We'll be checking in with them in the next few weeks. Turning now to baseball, the Major League season will get underway a week from today, and one player who will be playing for a lot more money is New York Met pitcher Dwight Gooden. The right-hander has become the second highest paid player in baseball after agreeing to a three-year contract extension with $5.15 million annually. Only Boston pitcher Roger Clemens makes more with $5.38 million per year. The deal starts after the coming season and runs through 1994. Gooden could have been a free agent next winter. He had just one year left on his current contract which pays him two and a quarter million dollars annually. And you and I were talking, and we don't think he's worth it. No, no. He, uh, <laughs> I, I, I wonder if he's going to remain the same kind of power pitcher mm -hmm. through the next uh, three years. He, but he is young. What, is he 24? Yeah, but he's had a lot of mileage in the early, in the early going in his 20s. And pitchers like that usually fade late in their career. Not a Nolan Ryan here. <laughs> Our baseball expert. <laughs> next in Burnson's corner, a man preserving the historic craft of the Shakers. Help you folks. Hi, got any microwaves, um, Bob? Yes. Great. Let's go, kids. Thanks, Bob. Let's go. Just uh, cooking a Tony's microwave pizza, Bob. Couldn't wait to get up. 
You work on commission here, don't you, Bob? Tony's, the pizza you can't wait to eat. Bob, you make a better door than you do a window, Bob. It's, there's a